What's up guys? I am back to bring you your recap on Little Women Atlanta season four episode five and it is titled Skinny Mini and this recap is definitely delayed but of course it's not denied my god. Switch up, switch up. First and foremost, let's address the fact that Tanya had the baby and she was not able to have the coochie birth that she had been praying for, my God. And she did say that it was the worst pain that she ever felt. So I'm not really sure what she thought it was going to feel like, but she did have her cesarean section, my God. But I just get annoyed because first and foremost, Vaughn did say that Nico was present and he showed up and Tanya said she was not surprised. But I just don't trust Tanya's ass because it's strange that she always tries to find a way to bash Nico. Do we know for a fact that he's a deadbeat dad? I'm not sure. But I find it interesting that she always tries to bash Nico, especially when Vaughn is around because she said, oh, thank God for Vaughn because Nico isn't around that much. And it's just like, girl, you're always going in on him. If he really is a deadbeat dad, then I guess it's valid. But why can you not just be happy that you have a new baby, my God, and you have a damn man who's not even the father taking care of the damn baby? Now, it was sad to hear that Tanya was suffering from postpartum depression, which is very common with women after they have their babies. But I really want to address the fact that she allowed Abira and Sam to come see baby Tahiri, but not any of the other little women. And I am like on both sides of the fence or riding the fence or maybe straddling the fence, the saying is, I believe. As it pertains to this situation, because I know that Sam and Debira are Tanya's real friends. They're her original friends. So I get why they would be invited and maybe be invited first. But Tanya saying that she did not want any of the other ladies because of their negative energy. I'm just thinking, well, girl, these are the same little women who actually threw you a baby shower. And I feel like that was a great gesture. So at the point that this is your circle of friends, if they're not negative energy enough for you to not be around them, why would you not allow them to see your baby, especially money? Because money was supposed to be a part of the water birth, my God. And the excuses that Tanya gave, I just felt like they were just asshole excuses. Granted, Juicy does run her mouth, so I do get that. But I'm not sure if Juicy would have been as nasty had she been able to see the baby. And then you had money. She said money was just grossed out with the water birth. So she didn't want her to be extra. And it's like, well, seeing a baby and being grossed out by a water birth should not be compared. And then she said many and her had their issues, but they resolved them, but she still doesn't want her there. And then the twins, they're just guilty by association. Well, bitch, these are the same little women who gave you a damn baby shower. So maybe you need to find a new group of friends if these friends can't be around your baby. And I do understand the whole energy thing and not wanting negativity around your child, but bitch, you are just as negative, Tanya. Now, I do want to take a little minute to address the fact that Sam was uncomfortable wearing the wigs in the past, and now we see her switching up her wigs. So I guess she is team wig wearer now, my God. She had the curly wig, and then now in this episode, she has this bob wig in her confessional, which I'm not a big fan of, but at least she's getting more comfortable with wearing the wigs and not feeling so insecure about them. Next, let's address Amanda looking for a new career since the tiny twins are on maternity leave, my God. And yes, I say the tiny twins because clearly every time Andrea gets pregnant, Amanda acts as if she can't do anything else, but she's decided to be a nail tech. And it was so funny to see her answering the phones. I'm not sure if she was supposed to be really answering the phones or if it was a test or a mock situation because she was answering a damn cell phone. So I would think that a business would not have a cell phone, but a landline. So I'm a little bit skeptical about the fact that if she was actually answering the phones for that nail shop or not. But it was interesting when uh, Amanda wanted to not sweep and clean up and just jump into doing nails. And my thing is, that is a craft, that is an expertise, that's a trade, that is something that takes either significant talent to do it naturally and or for you to be taught. So I'm not sure why Amanda thought she was going to go from 
not being confident in the nail class, my God, to then working on clients immediately. But I do feel like it was great to see Amanda stand up for herself, just making sure that she was not hired to be a freak show attraction just because of her being a little woman. So I commend her for standing up for herself, but it did not seem like it was the right time or the right situation because she thought it was personal to her size, but the reality of it is, regardless if you're tall, short, medium, fat or skinny, my God, you gotta start somewhere as it pertains to shops and salons and nail salons in the beauty industry. You don't just walk on in, my God, and start working on people, working on clients, working on humans. That's just not the way it goes. Next, let's address the topic of many claiming that she has been dieting and exercising, but she still wants some surgery because it's not working. And I feel like Minnie is lying, my God. She probably only puts on a front, in my opinion, during filming time as if she's dieting and exercising and not really committed to it during the off season when the show is not filming because um, for her to not have any results after six months, she can't possibly be being consistent. And for her to want the lipo and then needing the tummy tuck as well, I gagged because I had no clue that lipo was only going to remove 10 pounds. And my thing is, if it's only going to remove 10 pounds, that's not significant amount of weight for a serious change on Minnie's body, I don't think. So I, I she's still gonna have to figure out something else to do. Now what threw me off was, when Minnie said that this was going to encourage her to work out more. But you just said working out and dieting was not working. So how is the tummy tuck and lipo going to cause the workout to work? So you actually told on yourself, Minnie, because what you're saying is you really are not committed to working out, but you're gonna try to lie and use the lipo and the tummy tuck as your means of encouragement once you see some results. But I do think it was great that Sam accompanied Minnie and, you know, was being a great friend. When Sam ambushed Minnie at her house and had her mom come over and gave her the update on what's going on because the doctor did say that there were some serious possibilities of medical issues and side effects and complications that could happen. So Minnie was just all on board and didn't give a damn I got about the complications. And granted, this is what she wants, but is it best for her body and her size? So Sam is a true friend. She is the real MVP, regardless of many overreacting and blowing up and ignoring her and so on and so forth. But I was confused as to why many said that they don't understand in reference to her mom and Sam. And I'm thinking, honey, your mom understands firsthand how dieting exercise is very difficult because she has been, she's been that size since the show started and I don't see her size changing and I don't want to fat shame, but clearly she maintains a certain amount of weight and it's difficult. It really is difficult, but it takes commitment and dedication, my God. And Minnie is trying to skip over the commitment and dedication with a little surge, regardless of the possibilities of her having the side effects. But she just overreacted and then wanting to leave and then talking disrespectfully to her mother when her mother was only looking out for her best interest. It was just crazy. But Minnie is never rational when it comes to her life anyway. And we know that she is a habitual liar, my God. So don't trust that diet and exercise lie that she gave us. Last but not least, let's address the dinner party for Tanya so that everyone could see the baby. Now, Sam is my girl, but Sam lied in this scene because she conveniently told everyone that she had already seen the baby, she and Abira, and was acting as if she was surprised that the others have not seen baby Tahiri as of yet, my God. But I remember Earlier on in this episode, Sam even said that the other girls are gonna see the baby at the dinner at a later date, but I can't wait that long. So bitch, you knew, you knew the other girls were not gonna see the baby until the dinner. But lo and behold, my God, Tanya's ass did not even bring the baby and she left Tahiri at home, which I just feel like, you know what? I just can't stand Tanya's ass. I really can't because of all of these excuses, plenty of people have had children and have had babies. Most of these girls in the group have, well, not most, my God, because yeah, most, many lied. She ain't had no damn baby. But a lot of the girls, a couple of the girls had babies, my God, in this group. So what makes your baby so special? I mean, it is special because it's your baby, but not to make juicy and money 
get vaccinations to then not even allow them to see the baby, my God, but you let Sam come over without vaccinations. Oh, she just gets on my nerves, my God. But I was gagging when uh, Juicy said that the baby was sprinkled, my God, sprinkled with some Vaughn and sprinkled with some Nico, my God, saying that Nico fertilized the baby. <laughs> And Vaughn sprinkled the baby and the baby looks like Nico, Vaughn, and Tanya, my God. When I tell you that, Juicy, she is a character. She should be a comedian because she is crazy. She comes with the jokes and the clapbacks. And I was annoyed because I feel like Juicy was kind of proving Tanya right in her feelings about she being the one who was going to have something negative to say. But baby, it was funny. It was. We were all thinking that. So, I mean, Tanya, it is what it is. The whole world was thinking that. It could either be Vons or Nikos, especially since you were screwing them at the same damn time, my God. You move one out and you let the other slide in. One slid in and one slid out, my God. But it is what it is. If Vaughn likes it, I guess we love it. But I, I, it's something that does not sit right with me about Vaughn because I feel like he may be a gold digger as well. Not that Tanya has any gold, but it doesn't seem right that he is as comfortable again raising another one of Nico's children after Tanya pretty much, I guess, left him again, if that's how it went down. But anyway, that's about it, guys. My quick little recap on Little Women Atlanta. Please follow me on all social media outlets. Thumbs up this video. Comment down below in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notifications. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.